Unpaid work trials are commonplace, particularly in the hospitality and creative industries. In one notorious case, a cafe chain required job candidates to work for 40 hours for free until it reversed its policy following the intervention of an MP. So what is your right to payment and when might you have a legal case against an exploitative employer? I'm Daniel Barnett, a barrister based in central London, and I'm also the presenter of the Legal Hour on LBC Radio. In this video, I'll explain when minimum wage requirements don't count, how some unpaid trials are legal, what makes a job trial illegal, and what you can do about it. But before I explain the rules, please give this video a thumbs up and press the notification button to receive alerts for my latest explainer video. Under the National Minimum Wage Act 1988, employers must pay their workers above a specified amount per hour, depending on your age and whether you're an apprentice. But these rules don't always apply. For example, when someone is participating in a scheme to assist in the seeking or obtaining of work. Companies are therefore allowed to offer unpaid work trials so long as they follow certain guidance. The overall aim of the law is to permit employers access to a legitimate recruitment tool, but to stop exploitation. To test the legality of a trial, the government guidance states that the courts will check that, number one, it's part of a genuine recruitment process, meaning there must be a real job opportunity available, Two, it lasts no longer than is reasonable for an employer to check a candidate's ability to perform certain tasks. Three, the individual is observed during their trial. Four, the tasks performed are closely related to those required for the job on offer. And five, the trial doesn't hold other value to the employer, usually meaning it's in a simulated environment and only for a proportionate period of time if conducted in a real work situation. Finally, number six, trial periods are not to be used by the employer to reduce labour costs. Now, it's rarely accepted that a trial will reasonably last for more than a day and certainly not several shifts over multiple days. The longer a trial is, the more likely you are to be eligible for the minimum wage. The exception is where an employer offers a longer unpaid work trial to a job seeker on benefits who is voluntarily taking part in a government scheme. Now, in this instance, legality depends on you, one, continuing to receive benefits for the duration of the trial, two, trying out for a job that would last at least 16 hours a week for at least 13 weeks, three, being the only candidate the employer is considering, four, agreeing beforehand the length of the trial period, which is under five days for a job lasting less than six months, or under 30 days for a longer job, and finally five being offered the job if both you and the employer were happy with the trial. Now in creative industries, there's a culture of free pitching, where a, a potential client asks someone who's self-employed for a speculative piece of unpaid work. Now while this is considered to be bad practice, it's not actually against the law. If you're self-employed, you are not entitled to the minimum wage. For the purpose of employment law, you probably count as self-employed, although this is sometimes quite a complicated question. If you don't get paid through PAYE, if you're responsible for paying your own national insurance, and you don't receive holiday or sick pay. If you think you may have undergone an illegal work trial, you can resolve the issue personally. You can complain to HMRC, which may lead to a court case, or you can go to an employment tribunal. Where you were subsequently employed by the offending company, you should first get in touch with your manager. If the issue isn't resolved informally, you can go through your workplace's formal uh, grievance process. Now, these steps aren't essential, but they could get you a result quicker than taking legal action. A second option, is to complain to HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Enforcement officers will investigate by considering all the details in the work trial arrangement, and if they think there's been a breach of employment law, they'll issue the employer with a fine, as well as a notice for the arrears that they owe you. If the employer still refuses to pay, HMRC can take them to court on your behalf. The problem with this is that HMRC doesn't really treat this kind of investigation as one of its top priorities, and it picks and it chooses the cases that it's going to help with quite cautiously. Your third option is to go to an employment tribunal. 
Now, as part of this process, ACAS, the Advisory Conciliation and Arbitration Service, will offer you and the employer something called early conciliation. Now, this is a voluntary, free and confidential service where an impartial person will talk to both sides over the phone or through email and see if you can come to an agreement. If you'd like more information on early conciliation and pursuing tribunal claims, it would be worth looking up this video I made with ACAS, which explains the process. You might also be interested in why Uber drivers should no longer be considered self-employed and what the law says about paying sleep in carers. I'm Daniel Barnett. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.